Welcome back everyone to another episode of Kaiju VFX. Today we are going to create a beam battle effect, as requested by a couple of people. So before we dive into the effect, let's take a look at what the final product will look like. So as per usual, we have all the footage already in a composition here. We have our color grading layer for all that good stuff, and we have a uh, slight animation with Godzilla uh, blowing some atomic ray at Mogira. So in this tutorial I'll mainly be covering the beam battle aspect as in when the two beams collide and uh, the effects that ensue there. So I'm going to speed through creating Mogira's eye beam as well as Godzilla's atomic breath because I already have tutorials for both of those, and I'll give links to those in the description if you want to check those out. But let's get right into that. All right, so we have something basic here. Uh, not going to go too uh, over the top with the beams right now. Uh, there's a time and a place for that, but just for the sake of the tutorial, we just have some basic beams here. Uh, and something that I did is, while keyframing the core start and end for Godzilla's beam, uh, I actually copied the final keyframe for the core end and pasted that onto both of the Mogira beams, and you'll see why in a second. So next what we're going to do is sort of animate the battle going on, that back and forth motion of the beams colliding with each other. So we'll just start with Godzilla's beam here. We'll press U to open our uh, keyframes. And we'll set a keyframe after a little bit of time here for the core end. We'll move like 10 frames forward maybe. We'll hold shift to just push that straight back. We'll keep it there for a little bit. And then push it farther this way a little bit. See how far that goes. That looks pretty decent. Keep it there for a little bit. And then we'll bring it back to the middle. Let's set easy ease keyframes on all of these and we'll see how this battle looks. Obviously we're just looking at Godzilla's beam right now, but you can sort of get the idea of what it'll look like once we add in Mokira's beam later. Alright, that's looking good. So so let's go ahead and copy all of the keyframes for the core end here. And let's open up the keyframes for the Mogira eye beam and we'll just hit paste. So what that does is it automatically keeps the uh, sabers colliding with each other because they both have the same core end value which means that both of the beams will end at the same exact position and we'll paste those keyframes onto the other beam for Mogira as well and there we go so now if we unsolo everything and take a look at what we have alright that's looking pretty good so far so next we're going to start to uh, really light up this beam battle right here. And what I mean by that is we are going to create a new solid, we'll call this Flare. And as you guessed, we're going to add an optical flare from Video Copilot. And we'll just browse through the presets here until we find something that we like, something that has sort of a uh, mixture of blue and yellow would be neat. Alright, just wind up going with this one. Uh, so what we're going to do here, uh, this is the very first keyframe that the beams collide on. So we're going to animate the position. We'll solo this along with the beams just so we can see what we're doing. Let's open up the keyframes once again just for one of the beams, as well as the keyframes for the flare. And essentially what we need to do now is match up the f uh, optical flare movement with the beam battle. So we'll just go keyframe by keyframe and move the flare to where the center of that beam battle is so we cover up that little sort of odd looking gap between them yep so as you can see the flare follows the beams perfectly now let's prettify this flare a little bit more so let's keyframe the brightness right about there and when the beams first collide we're going to make this a lot brighter Maybe we'll play around with the timing there just a little bit. That's looking good. And so now we'll animate the flicker. So we'll set the speed of this to 95 or so, and the amount to 46. 
and we'll also animate the animation evolution just go to the end change that to uh, 15 should be fine maybe we'll lower that to 5 actually All right, but we're starting to get the gist of the beam battle down here, actually. So you could just leave it like this, and that would be perfectly fine if you're, you know, short on time and just want to get the effect done. But that's not how I like to do it. So we're going to add some stock spark hit elements. And we're going to bring these below the beams. And as you can see, there's just some, you know, sort of basic spark hit stock footage kind of like the sparks that uh, occur in tokusatsu when things hit each other. So I'm going to time stretch these sparks from Action VFX to about 200% speed. And that makes those sparks look a lot slower, which sort of gives the impression that they're bigger than, you know, just a normal bullet hit or something. So we'll go to that very first frame that the beams collide and move the spark elements to the center of all that and we'll change the blend mode of that to screen as well and add a quick glow effect so you can see what that does and uh, just what I'm gonna do now is just sort of go throughout this and add a couple more spark elements just so we have some sparks flying out of there at a pretty constant rate so I'll go ahead and do that all right that looks pretty good so next we're going to add even more flare, so to say, to uh, this beam battle. So we're going to create a new solid and we'll call this particles. And we will put this below all the beams and we'll solo it for now. We're going to add a CC particle world effect. You've seen me use this plenty of times before. Uh, for the physics, we're going to change that uh, the gravity to zero. And actually we'll maybe have a tiny bit of gravity. We don't want too much though, because uh, we're just going to make some quick particles that sort of uh, just fly out of that beam in addition to the sparks, almost like, you know, there's nuclear energy dispersing uh, this, you know, energy coming from Mogira's eyes. So we'll drag this layer forward to when the beams first collide. Have it start right about there, perhaps. And real quick, I'm going to keyframe the uh, particle producer position to go along with the beam battle so give me one second okay so that's all done uh, now these particles are emanating a little too far out uh, so we'll go into the particle settings here as well as the physics and we'll play around with uh, say the velocity and the actually perhaps the longevity of the particles as well something like that that's looking okay. Um, we'll change the transfer mode of all this to add. And we'll change the birth color. We'll have them start out as blue. Maybe they die sort of a bright yellow color. Uh, we'll up the extra perhaps. The extra angle. So the particles sort of fly in a couple different directions. Play around with the birth rate and longevity some more, the velocity. Okay, so now I'm going to press F4 and enable motion blur for the slayer. And we'll also add a vector blur and just sort of crush those highlights a bit. Maybe we'll up the birth rate once again. We'll add a glow effect. And we'll change the transfer mode of the layer to screen. So let's take a look at how this looks now. All right, that is looking very, very nice. So the last major step in this tutorial, because uh, most of the other stuff that you'll see, like lighting and uh, you know shockwaves and lens flares, has been covered many times already, uh, and I'd rather not beat a dead horse too much. So. I want this beam battle to end in a big explosion in the middle of them. And so we're just going to quickly... And so we're going to keyframe the core start for all of these layers. So we'll set these keyframes here as well as keyframes for the core end. And we'll go a couple of frames forward. And the coordinates for the core end we will copy and 
paste over to the course start so that we can have all of the beams end in the same general area okay there we go and uh, we will keyframe the particle layer the birth rate so by the time they get to there there will be zero particles coming out of that and the flare will also come down in brightness once they reach the end we'll also just straight up end all of the uh, beam layers okay so that's the first step done the beams you know just ending and so next we're going to add a aerial explosion and these come from video copilot's vc flight kit so I'll just look through these for one that seems to look pretty good. Kind of like that one. We'll try that out. And we will bring that in front of everything except for the frontal trees, obviously. We'll keyframe the speed of this just to speed it up a tad, maybe to a factor of 80. And we'll have this explosion start just as the beams are leaving both of their uh, entry points. So we'll do a quick keyframe job and we'll actually let's move the anchor point of this explosion to the center of it so we don't have to worry too much about position uh, but scale wise have the explosion start out a little bit small and we'll have it quickly grow to larger proportions and perhaps we will animate the position a little bit and just move downward a little bit all right, that looks all right. I'll probably play around with this later, but you get the general idea. So next, I want to duplicate this layer and I want to set the blending mode of this one to screen. And this is going to be our glow layer for the explosion. Uh, so we're going to you know, just go ahead and add a glow effect to this. And we'll play around with the settings and whatnot until we wind up with something that looks pretty good something like that that's all right so this way uh, this top layer of the explosion glows while we still have the bottom layer which is solid smoke and actually what we can do is add a hue and saturation effect and maybe desaturate this a little bit and bring down the lightness just so it's more of a just straight up solid cloud of smoke all right, all right, looking good. And we can add a shockwave to this explosion as well. This one looks all right. We'll just add this on top of all that. We'll stretch the time to 25 or so. Let's solo this. We'll add some glows. Add a color vibrance. Blend mode screen. We'll press F4, make this a 3D layer. And we'll Rotate it in sort of a shockwave fashion. Up the scale, maybe. See how that looks. Okay, so there's the general gist of the explosion. Uh, obviously, you can spend more time, you know, masking uh, the shockwave around uh, the other monsters, and I'll do that for the final one. But just for the sake of time. I'll leave you to that because I've explained that a couple times in other tutorials, I believe. Plus, there's plenty of tutorials out there on that. It's nothing too difficult. But, anyways, uh, so one last thing that I want to cover is a cool effect that we can do with this flare. You know, we have this battle going on between this blue beam and these yellow eye beams from Mogira. Uh, and we can make this flare change color throughout its life cycle so it sort of flickers between the blue and yellow as they gain power over each other so we're going to add a hue and saturation effect to the flare and we're just going to knock down all the saturation we'll solo this so you can see what's going on and then we'll add a vc color vibrance and we'll change the color of it to blue and we'll keyframe the color and maybe every two or three frames we'll change it to yellow and we'll just go forward every couple of frames and change the color 
So yeah, you can see this really makes the flare flicker between these two colors, and it looks really flashy and cool. Okay, well that about wraps up this tutorial. Obviously, you know, as I said, there's stuff that I tend not to cover in these later tutorials because I've done them so many times in the past. Uh, but I do hope this helps you out in creating some cool beam battles, which, you know, can definitely be a pretty cool part of a battle if used correctly. And, you know, this isn't the most advanced effect, and with a lot more time it could be done better, but, you know, if you have a little amount of time and just want to get a cool beam battle done, then this might help you out a little bit. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and remember to keep leaving uh, requests in the comments down below for what you want to see be done on Kaiju VFX, and I'll try to get as many as I can. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you guys then with whatever it is that I have to offer.